busy show. Football heavy, as we typically do on a Thursday. We'll mix in a little NBA, talk a little college football uh, with uh, Costco in about 15 to 20 minutes. Jovan Alford joins us in the 5 o'clock hour. We'll kind of get a, a sense on what's going on in the Philly sports scene, right? Because you got the Philadelphia 76ers trying to get on a little bit of a run. You have the Philadelphia Flyers that can't get out of their own way. You got the Philadelphia Eagles who, as crazy as it sounds, are vying, jockeying, if you will, for a playoff spot in a crowded NFC. And if there was ever a year where you can take advantage of that extended wild card, a la that seventh team, 2021 might be that year. And then we'll close with a little boxing uh, talk. My guy, uh, Lou Cortez, will uh, break down Loma and uh, Kami this weekend. Also, a stack card in Philadelphia 2300 Arena. I'll be calling the action ringside with uh, Steve USS Cunningham. That'll be Saturday. Give you a little preview as well. A little double dip for the Seagulls. Traveling 4-1 and one this weekend. Two very tough road tests, so we'll give you a little thought. On that, So a lot of stuff to uh, get into. And I think when you look at the NBA right now, and that's kind of where I want to start, where you look at the Philadelphia 76ers, really the league as a whole, uh, you have to kind of take with a grain of salt what's going on right now. Now, you have a very light night tonight. The Sixers will host a very good Utah Jazz squad. Jazz are laying three, by the way. Mitchell is a big-time player. Uh, You got the Lakes and the Grizz and the Denver Nuggets and the Spurs. But going back to the Sixers, we talked about wasting talent, right? Wasting uh, marquee talent. Guys in their prime. And if you watch what Embiid has done, Joel Embiid, He's shown you that he's he's able to take his game to another level. He's showed you that he can be as dominant and as great as he wants to be. Once again, you saw it last night, scores 32. The Hornets are just a, a, a pesky bunch. Covered on back-to-back nights, by the way. But my point is when Embiid, pardon me, Scored 32 last night. Curry adds 23 with a couple dimes. And now, all of a sudden, the Philadelphia 76ers that were sitting at 500, all of a sudden, they're 14 and 11, and they got a little juju. They got a little juice, a little momentum. They had the big win on Monday. Same floor, same court, and then they do it again last night. Harris adds 18. You don't have to, and I'll, I'll, I'll be the one that, didn't, doesn't, still doesn't believe in it. When you tank in sports, when you essentially decide, I'm going to put on the floor or on the field the worst possible players that I can to better position myself for a draft pick, I always think that's bad business. And it's crazy to think, and Bede's already been in the league now seven years years and if you see what he's done over the last several years you realize just how special of a player he is and right now we're seeing it again Embiid and no one's talking about this through 15 games Joel Embiid's averaging 33.1 minute a game so 33 and a little change Per game. That's his minutes. His career high was right around 33 and some change. 33.7 back in 2018 when he scored 27 and a half. So this tells you early on, forget about those minutes restrictions because they need the big man on the floor. And you're seeing it right now. And you have to just kind of marvel at what he's able to do. I mean, just go look over the last, I don't know, four or five games. 32, 43, 28, 42, 30. And he's logging 33, 36, 41, 33 minutes. 
So you should appreciate it while it's here. But this is still, you you might wind up having an all-time great Philadelphia 76 or in a beat because I'm not going to go right now and say stick them in uh, Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. And you also might have a team over the next four or five years that doesn't even get to an Eastern Conference final, doesn't even advance to the NBA finals. I mean, that's got to be perplexing. It's got to be frustrating. It really has to be. I mean, right now, I still believe the Brooklyn Nets are the most complete and balanced team, even without Kyrie in the Eastern Conference. And then you look at the Western Conference, you know, the bigs. We always talk about the NBA. You have to have a big to win. Well, not necessarily. I think the days of the big man in the NBA um, are done. And I think they have been for a while. I mean, you can you can go back, right? The, 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 the evolution. Think about three or four years ago. Remember we were saying, well, you know what? Where are you going to stick a guy like um, Okafor on the floor when the Sixers drafted him? Right, or Al Jefferson, you know, lack of shooting athleticism pretty much doomed his career, right? It's a dying breed. So now you've got that that next uh, of kin, that next big man stepping up. And I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, I, I've screened for years. I hate the fact that Embiid doesn't camp himself out on the low block. And I understand that's not the NBA's game. It's just not. The difference in a guy like Embiid than, let's just say, guys like Pat Hewing, who, fantastic, Elijah Wine, who's an all-time great. I don't even know if I want to say the difference because they, to some extent, ran the floor. Maybe someone like a uh, Steve Adams or DeAndre Jordan, right? Andre Drummond. You know, these guys can't shoot. But some of them can kind of still run the floor. A guy like Embiid never gets left behind in transition. And he can play defense. And that's kind of what that's kind of where we're at right now in the NBA. That's what makes it Durant, right? The concept of the point forward has so often associated with your small forwards like LeBron and Durant. But Durant can do it all. If you need him in the low block, he'll do it. But if you need him to spot up and shoot beyond the arc, he's going to do it as well. It's all about transition, transition, transition. Now, am I going to sit there and tell you in his prime, Green is perhaps or was the NBA's best point forward? No, you can argue that because he used to get up and down the floor. So I think the NBA, and this is why you kind of have to enjoy when Embiid does the post game in the NBA, I think it's dead. I do. I think we're at the point where you've got big men that are even talented enough where they can go one on one with a guard or they can guard a guard. And I think the art of posting up has kind of evolved into more of a let me face you up type of game. That's why when you watch a guy like Embiid and you see what he does with his natural gifts and athleticism. It's got to be more frustrating to know this might be the peak with him with the Philadelphia 76ers, where collectively as a whole, as a unit, as a group, they might never smell or sniff an NBA Finals appearance. And that's sad when you think about it because you're robbing robbing one of the game's brightest, most talented players of that opportunity. And it's not even about what's going on with Ben Simmons. It's just... Over the last several years, the way it's been structured, the way the organization has drafted, the way they've turned around with trades and signings and releasing players and thinking they can go for this deep run as constructed was a gross misoverplay. A gross misoverplay. So I say all that to say this. Enjoy the big man wise out there. Because as I alluded to, Logan... 33 minutes, averaging 24 and 11. Cleaning up the glass, not turning over the ball as much. 
And right now, this team is 14 and 11, still very early on in the season. But they got a little juice. They got a little momentum. Six and four in their last 10, winners of three straight. Now you got to keep it going tonight against a pretty good Utah Jazz team. Actually, a really good Utah Jazz team. Bad matchup, man. It's a bad matchup. It really is. You know, you think about Conley, Gobert, Mitchell. You got a bunch of shooters and scorers and slashers as well. So we'll see how it uh, plays out tonight. Uh, All right, we're just cranking up on a Thursday edition of BYP. As I mentioned, busy show, Costco. We'll talk a little college football with him. Uh, Army-Navy, which is always a fun time. I enjoyed that game thoroughly. We'll also get his uh, thoughts on the Army-Navy game, which is this weekend. And I say, you know, anytime I bring up Army-Navy, and I've talked about it for so many years, yeah, we know Army's laying seven, but that's a game where, to me, it's almost sacrilegious to bet. You just enjoy that game. You just enjoy the cadets, the midshipmen, Army, Navy. Granted, Navy, again, struggling this year. Three up, eight down. Army, eight and three. We know what Army can do. We've seen it over the past. But it's always a fascinating week and weekend Army, Navy. And that's the way I look at it. And don't forget, Army has already locked in a uh, bowl bid. I think they're playing in the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl against uh, Mizzou. So we'll talk to Costco a little bit about that as well. And then Jovan Alfred in the 5 o'clock hour, all Philly sports all the time. 5 o'clock, we'll do a little double jab at our guy, Lou Cortez. And then Q's picks at 5.45. A lot of stuff to get into. We're just cranking up 17 past 4 o'clock hour on a Thursday edition of BYP. Keep it locked in right here on AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio.